The best NATO tank, the hard-headed Abrams. The Russian-Ukrainian war showed once again that the tank is still the king of war. It has the final word in the seizure of territory. This also applies to cities. During the capture of Mariupol, the Russians formed assault groups always had a tank, which with its cannon broke reinforced concrete shelters, its shells and caterpillars broke through any barriers and could cover the attacking troops with its armor. Neither the most advanced anti-tank missile systems like Javelin nor cannons and howitzers could save them. But if a tank is a king of war, who has the most powerful tank in this kingdom? What tank today is considered the most formidable? Who is the king of kings? Of course, there is no consensus, but most military experts believe that it's the American Abrams tank, which is sometimes respectfully called the hard-headed Abrams for its power and protection. In this video, we'll talk about the most recent modifications of this tank. Abrams appeared as the American answer to the development in the USSR of such powerful and perfect tanks like the T-64, T-72, and T-80. Of course, other NATO members also reacted to the threat from the East by developing their tanks. The result of these developments was German Leopard 2, English Challenger, Italian Ariete, and French Leclerc. But the most mass-produced and most belligerent was the American Abrams. These machines were used during the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Yemen. They're in service in Australia, Egypt, Iraq, Morocco, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia. Also, deliveries to Poland and Taiwan are planned. In 1996, the tank plant in Detroit was closed. Since then, only upgrades of previously produced tanks are made at the tank repair plant in Lima. But the total output of more than 10,000 vehicles and their high modernization potential allow for obtaining, after modernization, quite good tanks. The most modern modification of the Abrams tank is the M1A2C, also called M1A2 SEP V3, which appeared in 2015. What does it represent? It's a tank of classical layout and has a crew of four people. The most characteristic feature of the tank is its massive multi-layer armor, giving the machine a rough, angular look and bringing the combat weight up to 63 tons. The most protected is the front projection of the turret and hull. For protection against cumulative or sub-caliber projectiles, combined armor modules are used, consisting of two thick sheets of metal and a filler placed between them. The latter originally consisted of ceramic tiles, later supplemented by elements of depleted uranium. How many of them in each module is a military secret? Currently, the Abrams uses the third generation of uranium armor. Because of this, the protection of the frontal projection of the turret when it's fired by shaped charge ammunition is equivalent to that which would be provided by a solid steel plate thickness of 1600 millimeters. When using subcaliber rounds, 960 millimeters. Let us note that these are the highest protection figures among modern tanks. It's not for nothing that this American tank is called the hard-headed Abrams. For the front lower hull, frontal part of these figures are respectively 1100 and 700 millimeters. The turret side armor is also laminated, but not so powerful, equivalent to about 550 millimeters of solid steel. The armor on the sides of the hull is not too thick, averaging only 35 millimeters, but the side projection is protected by 14 hinged screen modules. The attention is attracted by a very significant slope of the upper hull frontal part. It reaches 82 degrees, which also greatly increases the protection. Two of these six fuel tanks are also located here in the front. If they're hit by shaped charge projectiles, fuel can successfully wash out the resulting jet of ultra-high pressure. Abrams is equipped with a gas turbine power plant, Avco Lycoming AGT-1500, with a power of 1500 horsepower. Thanks to such power, the tank has a very high specific power-to-weight ratio, up to 28 horsepower per ton in different modifications outperforming most other tanks in this respect. Transmission. M1 Abrams is automatic combined with the engine. Transmission is hydromechanical and has four forward gears and two reverse gears. Speed is 65 to 72 kilometers an hour forward, depending on the modification, and up to 30 kilometers an hour in reverse. Many Abrams M1A1 and M1A2 were equipped with an auxiliary power unit placed behind the turret in a special armored box. 
This auxiliary engine provided power for the electrical equipment when the main engine was off. However, fighting in Iraq showed that the engine was the Achilles heel of the tank, and in 2003 they began to get rid of it. The first production vehicles were equipped with the M68A1 gun, a slightly modified 105mm L7 gun made in Britain. In 1985, the tank received a much more powerful and modern 120mm gun, M256, an offspring of the RH120 made by Rheinmetall for the Leopard 2 tank. The gun is stabilized in two planes, has excellent accuracy at ranges from 600 to 12,000 meters, and uses a wide range of ammunition, subcaliber with depleted uranium fins and core, shape charge, explosive subcaliber, anti-personnel, ammunition is 40 to 42 rounds, of which 36 are placed in the turret aft and four or six inside the hull. In addition to the cannon, Abrams can also use machine guns, of which there are three. The roof of the turret has an anti-aircraft machine gun which can be equipped with an M240 machine gun in 7.62mm caliber or Browning M2HB in a 12.7mm caliber. The other two machine guns are M240s, one paired with the cannon and the other placed in front of the loader's hatch. In addition, the Abrams are equipped with 66mm smoke grenade launchers on the sides of the turret. The Fire Control System FCS, is one of the main trump cards of the Abrams. The fire control system of this tank is considered to be the best in the world today. It can aim at a tank-type target at a distance of up to 3.1 miles. The gunner can use both daytime and infrared channels. The crew commander can also fire and aim independently. Both stationary and moving targets can be hit. All-round visibility is provided by eight periscopes, Communication with command and other combat vehicles can be conducted via satellite, even using commercial networks. But the main thing that distinguishes the M1A2 SEP B3 from older modifications without the SEP prefix is the presence of the FBCB2 system, which made the tank meet the requirements of the network-centric warfare concept, as well as the appearance of fragmentation fuse tracer round with programmable fuse in 2015. Also worth mentioning is the Special Tank Urban Survival Kit, Tusk, developed during the Iraq War. One of the components of this kit was the Dynamic Protection ARAT. It's mounted on the sides of the tank to prevent shape charge projectiles and grenades from entering the tank. The package also includes additional shields and thermal sights for machine guns on the turret roof, also bottom reinforcements. But the hard-headed Abrams, despite its excellent protection, energy equipment, and the presence of the most modern fire control system, still has several shortcomings and is quite significant. One of the features of the uranium filler is that if the armor is damaged, even if it was not punctured, it emits a lot of uranium dust, which is extremely poisonous. Breathing for a long time without a gas mask next to a damaged vehicle is dangerous. The armored door in the turret niche is one of the weak points of the tank, the grenade launchers tend to hit it. This solution was effective if the tanks were operating in dense combat formations without exposing the sides. In this case, the ammunition is protected by heavy turret armor, and in local wars, this became a vulnerability. On top of the turret, above the ammo, are bouncer panels, which should protect the crew during the burnout of the powder in the casings when the ammo is hit and the shells ignite, diverting the energy of the flame upwards but they cannot protect against explosion if there is at least one shaped charge shell in the ammunition. Among NATO tanks, the Abrams are the most vulnerable to attacks in the upper hemisphere, its roof and upper hull front end have no special armor packages, and its large size makes it easy to hit these areas. The huge gap between the turret and the hull does not add to the protection. But despite everything, Abrams is the most formidable combat vehicle capable of ensuring success against any enemy. I wonder what would happen if, for example, 500 Abrams ended up on the Russian-Ukraine front. That's the number of tanks Ukraine is asking for. And such a number can only be provided by Abrams. What do you think about it? Write about it in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. There are a lot more interesting reviews ahead.